It's the Knicks, Jets, etc. podcast with Alex Trateris, John Malika, and Ricey on the beat. Let's go. Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to another Jets episode on the Knicks, Jets, etc. podcast. And not with me, as always, my buddy, my co-host, my pal, my boy, Alex Tratacaster. He's on vacation this week. He's off. He thought this would be a nice, easy week away from the Knicks and the Jets. Too bad we have uh, our players in the Pro-Am game. They They lit everything on fire. You can check out the Knicks episode. Uh, with our boy Chip Murphy. Uh, we just recorded the Pac-12 episode uh, for college football uh, with Chip Murphy and my co-host today, Greg Albert, our, our producer for Knicks, Jets, etc. That's on Winning Picks Weekly. And so I'll give you the call right now. So please, guys, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to our YouTube and Knicks, comma, Jets, comma, ETC, period. Nobody writes it out. That's just wild. You can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. We are there. While you're on the YouTube page, you can check out Winning Picks Weekly. That's, again, me, co-host Greg Albert, and Chip Murphy, Chip Murphy 7 on Twitter. Catch us talking about all the sports. We just recorded the Pac-12 episode. Like I mentioned, we'll be going through all the conferences for college football, including college playoff bait, college playoff bets, college Heisman bets, over-unders. It's a good time. Then we're going to get into the NFL division and NFL conferences. Man, football is officially back. So definitely join us there, Winning Picks Weekly on Twitter. Our picks are live there for MLB Daily, Golf Daily, football is going to be there, baseball obviously coming up, uh, playoffs, basketball right around the corner. A little World Cup maybe, you know, some stuff. Oh, World Cup is coming hard. World (laughs) Cup is coming hard. Yep. Hard. Uh, So definitely check us out, Winning Picks Weekly. And um, that's about it. Uh, we, We know you're here. We know you're listening. Just like, subscribe, comment. And uh, we'd love to interact with you. And, oh, I know you guys want to interact today because, Greg, the world, the Jets world is on fire. It's on fire today. I I, I, I waited one day. I was going to make an emergency podcast when the news went down. And I, if you're listening right now, you know. Mekhi Becton, 77, our guy, he went down with, unfortunately, another knee injury. This time seems even worse than the last time. Got a damn chip in his knee. Unbelievable. Uh, so I'm glad we waited because, Greg, I, I honestly, for the first time, I, I guess I'm going to be critical of the Jets PR, right? We love the Jets PR. <laughs> on, on this podcast, we talk about the one Jets drive, how they win awards, how it's propaganda network. And honestly, how they're all over training camp Twitter, right? Like they they, they really oh, yeah. give us a play by play. They they tell us everything. Who's who's wearing what? Who's talking to who? You know, Joe Douglas is on the phone. That was you know that was a tweet today. So they're all over it. But yesterday they had a blunder, man. And I think that might have been a reason for the tizzy. Of course, they're a little, they're more pissed off about the situation. But as soon as Mikai Beckton went down. First they said, you know, they had to they had to get a car for him. So that was scary. But then they said, oh, it looks okay because the x-ray came out fine. Right? Which I don't understand how an x-ray came out fine and his knee was chipped. But that's neither here nor there. And once that came out, we kind of blew the sigh like a sigh of relief. And now that we blew a sigh of relief, now you're gonna come back, you know, at night and tell me, oh wait, the MRI is coming and they fear it's worse. Uh, what just happened? Like, what? nothing happened <laughs> in eight hours. He didn't play football again. He didn't walk. He didn't run the treadmill. He, like, so I don't know what happened. Um, so obviously that was a diagnosis the whole time. And they kind of, 
I wish they just gave it to us hard from the beginning, man. Uh, and they kind of softened the blow, and it feels feels worse right now. I don't know if it feels worse. I mean, obviously, Mikai Beckton feels the worst out of everyone here. Uh, but I really feel bad for the guy, man. He he had he had a chip on his shoulder coming in to the season. He's fighting with uh, Rich Cimini, uh publicly, um, you know, calling him weird, which I thought was funny. Uh, but you know, I don't want to say Rich was right, but he was kind he was kind of right. I mean. It, Makai got hurt. He was never healthy. He hasn't practiced in a year. The poor guy hasn't played a home game in MetLife in front of Jets fans, a regular season game, dude. That's unreal. That's a crazy stat. That's a crazy oh. fact about his career so far. That's unreal, man. And he's not going to have a, a home game this entire year. So right now, that's what we're sitting with, and that's, that's the official news. Um, what do you think, Greg? It's devastating, man. I mean, going into the draft, we talked at length about who we should take. Should we sure up the offensive line or should we go with more skilled players to help out Zach Wilson? I you know I think we all had faith that Becton was going to be back and ready to go. He was back. He wasn't ready to go. Um, You know, obviously you wish you could do stuff differently. It sounds like last week. Towards the end of the week, he started getting braces put on his knee. They said, oh, that wasn't anything related to the injury. He was limping earlier in practice. Oh, that wasn't related to the injury. It's like, dude, a guy his size, a guy that plays the physical position he plays. Why, shut him down. Why, are we, why is he not on a pitch count? Why is he not taking every other day off? Like, like, what does this matter right now? I know he needs to get up to speed. I know this. I know that. The dude needs to be healthy and on the field, and he's not. So... It's devastating. I mean, it, he was going to be our right tackle for the season. Now we're that, scrambling. That was a sacrifice. That was a sacrifice from him. You know what I mean? He was like, yeah. listen, I get it. I am a left tackle. He drafted me to be a left tackle. I was amazing at left tackle when I played, but I get it. There's a veteran there. I haven't been healthy. You know what I mean? He, he was probably learning how to play right tackle without us knowing, you know, in yeah. the off season. And he agreed to it, and he was down. Like, it sucks, dude. It's terrible. So, I mean... I mean, what more can you say? It's the worst case scenario come to life for Makai Becton and his team. And it was in the back of everyone's minds. But, you know, I think when he start when he started practicing, he was looking good. Uh, you know, I didn't think it was going to be this serious this fast. It sucks. We talked about it last week on the episode. Injuries start popping up around the league. You get worried. You get nervous. It's like, okay, football is really here. These guys are practicing and anything can happen at any time. Um, it sucks. It sucks. I don't know what else to say. I'm nervous now about the season. I'm nervous about the right side of our line. Nervous about Zach Wilson and his progression. I mean, granted, are there are some positives coming out of camp about other positions, and the offense looking pretty good. Some pretty good, you know. You said we get the play by plays on Twitter, so you know some really great tweets about Corey Davis coming down with some catches. He's looking pretty good. Elijah Moore always seems like has a highlight or two every practice, so. Um, and Conklin's been playing really good. So there's some highlights there. There's some positives, but this is the worst case scenario. This is as bad as it gets when it comes to preseason stuff. I don't know if there's really anything else I can say about it. I don't know what else is there to say. Yeah, I mean, and this is why you, you mentioned the draft, and I got a lot of heat from you and Alex specifically about not wanting sauce. But it was never, I hate Sauce Gardner. He's going to be the worst player ever. It's that we need Iquanu. <laughs> you know, it was always, I, it was literally always Iquanu. But to be fair, it was for guard position, right? And they fixed that with Lake and Tomlinson, flipped AVT over. Yeah. Which AVT is cool with. Uh, if he's cool with it, I'm cool with it. I love the man. He was so cool when I met him in London. His family is awesome. I chilled with them. <laughs> like, we even ate at the same restaurant. Like, we, like, uh, ended up next to each other at the same restaurant. Like, I talked to them again. They were super nice. Uh, he, he, he's that dude, right? We just went through this whole thing about uh, USC, uh, you know, in the Winning Picks Weekly pod. Like, shout out to ABT. I love the guy. So, that's why I was upset about Equan, right? Because I wanted him. It was nothing to do with Sauce Gardner. Now, that's why I said Sauce Gardner better be good, right? <laughs> because now, you know, 
we're, we're back where we started, you know, in terms of the offensive line and our prized possession in Zach Wilson, right? And just sticking to that, today, as we speak in training camp, the left tackle, George Fant, he is not practicing due to a knee injury. Yep. I don't want to put that in quotes because I don't know if it's really that's the full reason, but he's also in a contract, quote-unquote, dispute because he wants that contract extension. Okay, so he refuses to play right tackle anymore. I know that he was a right tackle in the Jets for a short period, so we're kind of like, oh, we're good. You know what I mean? But no, that was because he was forced there because he was in acquisition and Mekhi Becton was our draft pick. So we're not moving him. You know what I mean? But now that Fawn was... Listen, dude. Fawn, McGovern, AVT, JVR, GVR, <laughs> right? And like, and Morgan Moses was the number 11 ranked offensive line last year. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's unbelievable. So... Fant, uh, we always say, yeah, it's a contract year, so who knows? He had the best season he's ever had, right? I think he had, like, 75 on PFF, which is not amazing, but for him, it was the best season he's ever had. He wants that left tackle contract. He's only playing left tackle from now on, and I get it. I totally understand it. And he wants left tackle money. My question is, does he want left tackle money? And would be okay moving to the right tackle? Or was he just refusing to play the right tackle because the difference between the right and the left contract is huge? So he was just seeing, you know, one year in advance, you know, I need to move to the left because I need that contract again. You know, it's going to be my last one probably. Yeah, that's or, a good know, point. So I'm wondering if... Because, you know, it comes down to we have Dwayne Brown here, right? You said, I don't... You said, what do we do now? We have Dwayne Brown here because... The positives, Greg, we don't even have to look – you don't have to look across the field. You don't have to look anywhere to find the positives in this Mekhi Begson situation, right? It sucks. We, we It really, really sucks for 77. It sucks for us as a fan base. sucks for him as a person. It sucks for him as a career. It just sucks, okay? No one's happy about it. However, it didn't happen week one versus the Panthers. You know what I mean? It's We're in training camp. Like, yeah. there's, still, there's still time to recover here. And, again, we, we went through without him last year, and he's never had a home game with us. It's not like we're losing, you know, someone who played every snap. You know, now we're like, oh, my goodness, we have to replace this person. You know what I'm trying to say? He was never there to replace. He was just in our hopes and dreams at the end of the day. So when you go – when I um, – the reason I say that is now we have Dwayne Brown, who's a veteran, even more of a veteran than Fant, and he's rumored – to be uh, on the Jets' radar, okay? That's what Coach Sala said today. Yep. But more than that, he was at our practices. He was at the green and white practice. He, did, he took a physical, okay? And he has a contract offer. So he's probably going to shop around that offer. And what's interesting is he was doing all this before the Beckton situation went down. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. This didn't happen yet. This didn't happen post injury. Post injury, we picked up some guys here and there. But pre injury, Dwayne Brown was in the building. So I'm wondering if there's some issue here with Fan. Do we not trust him with the injury? Are we not sure how this kind of situation is going to go? Is Dwayne Brown going to be signed to be our left tackle? I think that's a fact. He's older, right? He's basically, he's going to, George Fan, George Fan. You know what I mean? To be like, sure. listen, I'm the older guy. I'm only playing left tackle. I'm gonna, even if it's a one year deal, I'm gonna only play here. So, I guess my question is, let's let's start with let's start with fat. But like the reason I bring this up, I want the only reason I you know I had to say all that is because I I wanted to get some context as to, as to why I'm asking. So, do you think George Fant would be satisfied playing right tackle with left tackle money, or do you think he's when you play decent, you know, or do you think he's going to be stubborn about, hey, I'm staying at left tackle, even no, you know, no matter, you know, you're going to pay me his left tackle, and I'm playing his left tackle. Don't move me to this nonsense right tackle. I'm a veteran. I was the best player on this whole, you know, offensive line last year. Yeah, I don't. I think he would be okay playing right tackle with left tackle money because at this point in his career, he's a veteran. Like you said, it's probably going to be his last multi-year contract, big contract. So 
at this point, it's about the dollars and whether he plays right tackle or left tackle. I don't think it matters too much because it's not like he's setting himself up for two or three more contracts after the fact. So um, I don't think that's the case. I don't know in his career previously if he's played both left and right tackle for a whole season. Just for the or Jets. Not. Just for the Jets. But it wasn't a full season. That's true. So, but who, so, he, was with, so he was with Seattle, too. Yeah. When, interestingly enough, it was Wayne Brown and George Fan. So, yeah. I mean, they've, he's, he's ran into this issue. I, I wonder if he's pissed off that Dwayne Brown following him around. He's going to ruin him a little bit, too. But on the other side of this, man, it takes two to tango. Do you think Joe Douglas is going to pay, uh, you know, fans left tackle money to be the right tackle? I think so at this point because I don't think it's going to be, like, top-end left tackle money. Like, I think if you look at the left tackle market, there's 32 left tackles in the league. You could probably say 10 of them are – rookie contracts or below contracts or whatever not great contracts so 20 of them are great he'll probably be you know the 15th to 12th pay, highest paid left tackle maybe something in that range which is obviously way more than the right tackles make but still he's not gonna be breaking the bank joe douglas like he said before i agree with you know i believe him at this point he's not gonna set the market for anyone george fans not the guy to overpay like crazy i think he's gonna get a good contract i think at this point we're in a beggars can't be chooser situation if you're the jets you know we need tackles and we have money to spend especially this season or next season so let's spend a little money let's get our well at least one tackle figured out and then we'll work on the other tackle because obviously Beck is not the answer that's so crazy that I, I, all of a sudden it feels like we have no tackles like literally one week ago, I was like, yo, we are so set at tackle right now. We're about to extend fan. He's about to be great. Beckton's about to be all right. We're about to own it. We're about to own the offensive line. Yeah. And now we don't have anyone because we don't know if fans going to sign. We don't really know what's going on with his knee now that Dwayne Brown is in there. It kind of just gives me, like, it makes me raise an eyebrow. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? Do you guys know something? Yeah, maybe everyone knows something. That's why the win total is five and a half. And you and I have been like, oh, this is the easiest over of all time. And maybe a couple other injuries happen. A couple other, th you know, disgruntled players, you know, don't well, play I'm great. Not, I'm not going to go that far, man, because... All of a sudden, we're in trouble. We'll get to the defense later, but I think our defense has a chance to be elite. Uh, yeah. I, 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 and I think an elite defense is going to get over five and a half. But we'll, 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 we'll get to the defense here at the end. I just want to complete this, this offensive line situation because we saw today... In, in, in training camp through the tweets, right, not physically saw, um, that Max Mitchell and, I and Idoga both are our draft picks. Like, they're nice depth when they're depth, but when we have to use them, they were getting they were getting torched. They were getting absolutely torched. Zach Wilson was, was getting murdered. Well, I was, I've been talking about this all offseason and pre-draft and all that stuff. Are they Jets good or are they NFL good? A lot of guys on the Jets right now are Jets good. They're not NFL <laughs> good. So... You know, the defense, to your point, has a That's chance McDermott. to be NFL. That's good. McDermott to me. Yeah. Right. Like McDermott, he's injured, but he like he's still, he's Jets good. He's a Jets right tackle. Even Fan, up. to your point, Fan's a great left tackle for the Jets. He's not a great left tackle in the league. You know, that's why he's not commanding more money in it somewhere else. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather have Brown or Fan just straight up at left? Like, if you have to release, like, if you have to, like, get rid of one. Like, you know, like, Dwayne Brown's not coming in or Fan is going to be pissed off, like, Whatever. To me, it's a coin flip. Probably yeah. it was it. Did Fant play right tackle and Brown play left tackle in Seattle? Yeah. yeah so so. yeah, I'll probably stick with Brown. But I don't remember their ages. I don't remember their injury history. Yeah. But that was with your boy Russell Wilson too. Yeah, you know Russell Wilson. That's a whole nother conversation for another day. So there are other options, right? We have. Sure. Uh, Dillard, right tackle from the Eagles, who played horrible last year, but he's there. Uh, we have Bulaga, who actually, when he plays, is really good. Yeah, he had some good spots last year. So that I don't mind bringing in. Right? No one's getting Kalo money, right? Because we're talking about Joe Douglas here. And I kind of want to stick on Joe Douglas for a second, right? Because we we praised him on this show, okay? And... Today, I think, is a day to kind of uh, hold them accountable a little bit. All right? So maybe it's not too fair, 
right? Because it just happened. But right now, the 2020 draft is first. It looks tough. Yeah, it looks real tough. There's a shot that every single one was a mess. Well, we got Mikai Becton, we got Denzel Mims, Ashton Davis, Jabari Zuniga, Michael Pirine, James Morgan, Cam Clark, Bryce Hall, and Brayden Mann. All right, so we got Bryce Hall. <laughs> so we got Bryce Hall as our fourth cornerback. That's the only guy that starts. Uh, I mean, of course, we got Braden Man, the punter, but this might be his last year, depending on how well he does. Yeah, I'll cut him a little slack on Becton because to me, Becton's like just like kind of freak injuries at this point. Like the prospect and the player, we bro, saw he broke his kneecap. Bro. Yeah, you know, like, like all I can think of is the is the is the Tyson. I broke my back. But like, yeah. I broke my knee, bro. I like broke you, my knee. You threw the stat out there earlier about him not playing a home game, Becton. Like he played a whole season. Back then, was healthy for a whole season and played a whole season for the Jets. So we he was incredible for one year in 2020, his rookie year. The problem is, is that he's been injured ever since. So that's that's my problem, is that when he was on the field, he was phenomenal. But he just hasn't been on the field for now. It's going to be two years. It's tough in the NFL to come back after missing two straight seasons. It's not that he didn't play in MetLife. He didn't play in front of fans because that was the COVID year. Oh, uh, right. So he's never literally played in front of fans at MetLife Stadium. Bro. That's it's crazy. It's unbelievable. Okay. It's unbelievable. We've never seen him. I've never I've never witnessed with my eyes Mekhi back then at home. <laughs> Only in practice. Yeah. I, I go to the games. It's crazy. I've never seen him play. You know what I mean? Like, that's so wild, dude. It's insane. So, like I said, I'll cut Joe Douglas a little slack on uh, Becton because when he was on the field, he was incredible. Um, the problem is now is that he's not on the field. So, I I, I just, I don't know. I don't so, know do you think, back then. so, <laughs> I know, man, it sucks. So, he's not going to buy any big names like Kalo. Do you see him bringing in, uh, uh, we're obviously making small transactions, but do you see him buying a real starter like Bulaga or maybe Dillard who plays at least like yeah. the dog would be tough. I know we drafted him, but that's tough, dude. He's a <laughs> dude. I think so. I think there's a legit shot. Cause at this point in the off season, I, I really don't know, you know, obviously the whole roster needs to improve. Like again, I think our roster is jets. Good. I don't think we're NFL good, but at this point, if you start the season bad and Zach Wilson looks bad, you're all the whole Jets organization is a little bit on the hot seat. I agree. So, um, whether it's LaFleur, whether it's Sala, or whether it's Joe Douglas. So, I think they know that they have a major problem right now with Becton going down. To your point, I think maybe they were planning on a little bit. The Max Mitchell draft pick, bringing in a couple guys in the offseason, having a couple guys in the building throughout the last couple weeks. I think maybe they were planning on it or just preparing for it, not planning on it, but preparing for the possibility especially now that they got him out there on the field and live practice and seeing him move and seeing him do what he does with Becton before he got hurt. So they're like, all right, maybe we do need to bring a couple guys in here just to shore up this offensive line. But to your point with the hodgepodge offensive line we had last year, and that's putting it nicely, we were ranked high for PFF on the offensive line. And besides Zach Wilson being pressured, I never felt like we were – you know, I thought we did okay. We, I think we had a pretty good rush game. I think we did okay when we needed to. It's so just, the issue was, I was he was holding the ball too long. What's up? He was holding the ball too long. Yeah, yeah, and that's rookie stuff. I was expecting just such big improvements. I was expecting such a big year from Brees Hall. I still think it's going to happen. I still think the offense is going to look great. I was expecting just at least week one, week two. Everything just to look great and be ready to go. I know it's the NFL. I know it's never going to happen. The Jets. It's the New York Jets. Forget the yeah, NFL. but it's the NFL, dude. It's every single team at this point has had someone get hurt, someone banged up, whether it's something serious and they're out for the year already, or whether they're just missing time, or whether it's Roquan Smith, your best player, and he's just holding out. So, you know, it happens. Uh, I just didn't think it was going to happen this early. So I think he's going to end up on the Chargers. Roquan Smith? Yeah, I, I really do think so. If so, I got all right. Well, I didn't even think about that. I was hoping that there was a shot that a team like us that needs a linebacker gets them. We but... just got Quan. Quan and Roquan Smith are the same thing. 
Yeah, but you're not going to – Joe Dawkins is not going to do that. You're going to pay C.J. Mosley, trade for Roquan, pay for Quan Alexander. Do you not know Joe Douglas? That's, that's not happening, bro. That's dream linebacker work. core would be sweet. That would be a sweet <laughs> linebacker core, though. It would. It would. But, yeah, um, I they don't love, know. They love Sherwood more than I think anyone ever will imagine. <laughs> that's going to be either here nor there. If he's going to the Chargers, I got to get that plus 1,600 in for them to win the Super Bowl. Get, get on the Chargers, bro. They're winning that division. Uh, shout oh, out yeah. to the winning picks weekly. But moving on to the defense, right? We're on We're on to the defense. And your point about being NFL good or Jets good, this is really where I'm at odds. Because I don't know if the offensive line is just so bad right now. You know, that's why every play is a sack. Or that our defense is just unreal. Uh, like, I know there's it's probably somewhere in the middle. But I'm, I'm really leaning mm-hmm. – towards the right here and the right being the Jets defense is unreal because if Carl Lawson is Carl Lawson and he's talking like he's Carl Lawson that really excites me right he was talking yeah. about he's like he's Ahmed Gardner not sauce until he proves it I love that so much yeah Rob or Robert Sala was saying that he's AG he's not sauce no one calls him sauce yeah I love that so uh, I love that so much speaking of the guy that literally called him sauce <laughs> yeah. Like literally as soon as he called yeah. the draft, so I love that so much. Yeah. Uh, this is the this is the time for you know Carl Lawson, Jermaine Johnson on the edges, right? Followed by Jacob Martin, who we signed, right? Yeah. Bryce Huff, who we know is good, right? Michael Clemens, who might murder somebody on the field. It scares the shit know. out of me. <laughs> yeah, like that means that players are gonna get cut. You know what I mean? Like, Zuniga's probably not going to make the team. We cut two guys, right? Right, Two defensive linemen. I think we yeah. cut today to make some room. I'm telling you, like, like who knows if a lot of these players are going to make the team players that we know. You know what I mean? Players that, like, Vinny Curry. Is he going to make the squad? I honestly don't know. No, nah, he's been banged up, too, right? I don't I don't know if they're, I don't know if he's going to make this team, which is crazy to think about from where he was, what, two years ago? Or a year ago with maybe well, never playing Well, last year he because he was injured. And we're like, all right, fine. We'll get him this year. Like, this could be a career-ending thing for him if he takes two years off. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's wild. So, I think our defensive front is crazy, dude. Lawson and, and JFM and Quinn Williams, Jermaine Johnson. You got Sheldon Rankins and Solomon Thomas in I'm there. really excited about John Franklin Myers. I'm ready to see him go nuts this year. There's going to be so much opportunity for him with Q Will having a contract year this year. He got a sack today. Yeah, Lawson going nuts. He's going to get double teamed. Jermaine Johnson's going to get some attention. I think he has a real opportunity to do some damage. I think he was one of our better defensive linemen last year. Um, I'm really excited to see what he can do because he's one of those guys that I feel like is, uh, unless I'm wrong, like a homegrown kind of guy. I didn't hear about him until last year or the year before, and he's moving up the ranks. He's making a name for himself with the Jets. I'm very happy about that. Hopefully, I'm ex- I'm hoping to see big things from him this year. I think he could have an awesome year. So, well, he's not technically homegrown, but we uh, we picked him off waivers uh, from the Rams uh, a couple years ago, like, b- yeah. like 2019. That's so, what I mean, kind of by homegrown. Like he yeah. wasn't doing anything in the league until he came to our team. He got he's, opportunity. He's not a draft pick. We can't say he's a draft pick, you know, because if he's a draft pick, like then then we'd be hold him near and dear to our hearts. Oh, then I'd be screaming to thank. about it. Yeah. Nobody on the Jets is like nobody's no. This is the closest to homegrown talent we can get. Someone cuts him and we take him up like Braxton Berrios. I feel like he's homegrown. Yeah, uh, John Franklin Myers. At the, but you know we'll see about Quinn Williams. Uh, we we you know we got some guys here. But Greg, I really wanted to touch really quickly on somewhere I read today that the Jets have a chance at an elite secondary. If you could get – if you could stop the run on this team, right, that's where Franklin Myers comes in. That's where Quinn Williams comes in, okay? If you could now put the Jets into third and five or more, you have an elite secondary with DJ Reed, with LaMarcus Joyner, hopefully, okay? Pra- praise God, okay? Jordan Whitehead has a strong safety, and then we're talking about AG at cornerback. We got Michael Carter at the nickel. We got Bryce Hall backing him up. We even got Javelin Goodry and Isaiah Dunn fighting for a spot, dude. I don't even know one of them's not going to make the team. Like, that's how good we are. They're going to make the practice squad, wait until someone gets injured, come back, whatever. Yep. But, dude, I, 
I I love this team. I think I think it was on the um, the the official New York Jets podcast. They had the uh, forgot her name. There's she, she was wearing red. <laughs> um, some lady from the NFL visiting all the all the training camps from the NFL Network. Uh, she was on the the Jets show with Ethan Ethan she Greenberg. Is, she ESPN. I think she's NFL Network. She's wearing an NFL shirt. Okay. Uh, so I think it's NFL Network. Sorry, bro. it just slipped my mind. But she was the one talking about how, you know, getting the Jets in third, getting to third and five is the name of the game for this Jets team. And finally, Salah has a, his own scheme with DJ Reed, with the three, you know, with the three, uh, you know, the three package in the back. I don't know, man. Uh, that's why I love the five and a half so much. If we're, even if, it's not, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Greg. I'm listening to fantasy football with uh, on ESPN with Field Yates and whoever the new guy is because Matthew Barry's gone. Tragic. Another tragedy that happened. <laughs> yeah, Stefania Bell's not on there yet. She comes on during the, injury, during the season talks about injuries. But um, Field Yates, they, they had the episode about the, the Patriots and the Jets talking about... Um, Double you know, trouble? Fa- yeah, about fantasy. Yeah. And they're really excited about the Jets' prospects, right? Oh, their wide receivers this, and I think Elijah Moore that, and you know Garrett Wilson this, and the the hookup. That's the part where people are going to be disappointed in the New York Jets, like all that stuff. It's that's the only quote unquote same old Jets that I see happening. We're not going to have the big fantasy wide receiver guy. The tight end guys are going to be spread out too. Like Conklin's going to get a couple touches. Yeah, Uzama. Like nobody's. Isn't is there nobody fun? But where I think the fun comes in is that running back. You mentioned Brees Hall. Like I think we're going to be a ground and pound football team. That we get we 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 pound the rock because our in, the inside of our offensive line is literally elite, literally elite. With Lake and Tomlinson, uh, AVT, and even McGovern in the middle. Like that's an elite offensive line interior we're gonna run it and we're gonna get third and shorts so we can have zach wilson cook you know with the blitz he's gonna get blitzed hard and we're gonna have to try to find somehow to cook on you know third and short on the other side we're gonna have to just stop the defense stop the running with our elite defensive line our less elite linebackers but they're turning they're, they're looking good now they're starting to look good with Quan Alexander, CJ Mosley, you know, and then now they have, you know, Q Will and Sherwood in the back. That looks good to me. If they can start stopping the run with that's all CJ Mosley wants to do anyway, you get some dirt and longs. It's going to be ugly football. It's not going to be pretty. But I could see, I could see the Jets winning with ground and pound football, man. I'm excited. That's what a defensive, that's what a defensive coach wants. We have a bunch of speedy guys. Like Braxton Berrios, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, you know, or you know, Tyler Conklin, CJ Uzama. Those players live for third and shorts, bro. Those players all live for third and shorts. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I agree with you a hundred percent. I don't know if that's you know, if a lot goes into people talking about Zach Wilson, but to me it's more the scheme and the system where these guys come from. These guys are San Francisco. I know, uh, was it Mike LaFleur's brother, Matt LaFleur, right, is up in Green Bay with uh, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, See they, you October 15th, son. Yeah, they run a similar system, too. If you look at this, I'll just, I'll just pull it up real quick while you talk. San Francisco, for sure, we all know, especially from fantasy football, they run the football. They have two or three, four backs that can run the football. Debo Samuel, ultimate X-Factor type of guy. We have two of those. Though. They play defense. They try to clamp it down, and they don't put the game on Jimmy G's shoulders. I the think four, the, that's a fourth string quarterback. Yeah. Uh, did you see that? No, I didn't see that. They listed him as fourth string quarterback that's on their tough. depth chart today. That's tough. Took him to the <laughs> NFC Championship game last year, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> so again, I was just looking it up real quick. Elijah Mitchell last year, San Francisco running back, eleven hundred total scrimmage yards, six total touchdowns. Debo Samuel, 1,770 total yards, 14 touchdowns. Then I'm like, okay, well, what about Michael Four and Green Bay? A.J. Dillon, 1,100 total scrimmage yards, 7 touchdowns. Aaron Jones, 1,200 total scrimmage yards and 10 touchdowns. These guys are going to run the ball. 
They're going to play good defense. Look at what Green Bay's done. Green Bay's invested nothing on the offense because they have Aaron <laughs> Rodgers for, what, four years now? And they've just def- defensive draft pick after defensive draft pick after defensive draft pick. And that's what they're. That's the style they're trying to do. And Aaron Rodgers talked a little bit about, on part of my take today, this new style of offense that he's running is, isn't the West Coast offense that he's used to. And it's all scheme and schematic. It's all breaking knowing the progression and knowing where to go with the ball based on what you see. And the hard part for a lot of young guys, and Zach Wilson's in that boat, is figuring out what you're seeing. Not worrying about the play call, not worrying about where your guys are lining up, not worrying about the time on the clock, but worrying about what you're seeing before the play happens, being able to analyze it quickly when the play starts to develop, and then go to where you go. So I agree with you 100%. Brees Hall, what, plus 800 for Offensive Rookie of the Year? We talked about that on Winning Picks Weekly. I love it. While you're talking so about this defense, you want to talk about, while you're talking like, about this, Mekhi Becton going down makes me love that even more. And talking about too, when you're talking about this defense being elite, I agree with you. Jermaine Johnson plus a thousand defensive rookie of the year, along with Sauce Gardner plus a thousand for defensive rookie of the year. I've been saying it from day one. I think Sauce Gardner has a chance to be elite. Ag 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 has a chance to be elite. <laughs> And I think, yeah. and I think he can do it by the end of the season. I think there's a shot. He has an incredible rookie year, especially if he doesn't have to be the number one guy. Especially if people are testing him because we have DJ Reed and we have other guys locking down the number one. Don't want to test AG, man. AG's got it on lock. So plus a thousand for him. It'd be kind of tough for DB to win Defensive Rookie of the Year, especially with so many linemen getting drafted early. But Jermaine Johnson. Again, a lot of these other defensive linemen, when they go to these bad, bad teams, they're going to be double team and triple team because they're the big guy, they're the new guy on campus. Jermaine Johnson comes in with Carl Lawson, Q. Will, a couple other guys. He has an opportunity to really perform. I think he had 12 or 13 stacks with Florida State last year. If he does something like that again this year, I mean, that's a lock for him to win it at plus 1,000 if he gets to 13, 14 sacks. So not saying that's going to happen, but if it does, it's a pretty nice ticket. Can I say something? Sure. The, the more I look at it, dude, the first five weeks are cake for... Okay, I won't say five. I'll say four. Because the five, five, we hit Miami, and that's Tyree Kill and Jaden Waddle. But now we're, we're talking... We're, that's tough. Stop. We're talking about this. We're talking about the secondary here. Besides, you know, Cincinnati, we have Chase. You I know, mean, that, T. That's Higgins. one guy. Yeah, you got yeah T Higgins. Yeah, okay, so okay, so one of the third but, guys I forget, but they have three good receivers. So Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore. I'm not scared of their wide receivers. Nope. Cleveland they doesn't have a quarterback. Uh they know, what's his name? Jamar? Or was it uh, Jacoby Brissett? Yeah. Yeah. My s- boy, the cover machine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not the winning machine, just the cover machine. Yeah. Uh. Cincinnati, they have blood in their eyes from from Mike White. Yeah. So that's you know, but it's at home. You know, they have good wide receivers, but you know, th- that'll be a nice test. But you know, that'll probably be the, the big, the first big test. Yeah. And then at Pittsburgh, they don't have a quarterback. Sure. And then Miami, that's tough, right? With Hill and Waddle. It's Green it's, it's, it's tough because of Hill and Waddle. It's not tough because of Tua. You're right, and I, I I was reading that Gusecki uh not getting not getting the ball. They're turning him to a real tight end this year, which I don't know. The offensive line stinks. I get it, <laughs> but the stinks. offense is gonna stink too. Yeah, stinks that offensive line. So I mean, and and then you know, then we get the gauntlet. Then we got Green Bay, Denver, New England, Buffalo. So that's uh, you know we, we get there to get there. But I'm just saying, New England, man. Plus 400 to finish last in the AFC East. I don't know if it's just Twitter fingers or what, but the reports coming out of that camp are ugly. I love it so much. Ugly. The fact that Tom Brady belongs in prison and the Patriots are literally imploding, uh, it makes me so happy. Oh, yeah, how's Cole Strange working out for you? Oh my goodness, Cole Strange. No, right. my favorite. My favorite. Mac Jones is that. in the best shape of his life, though, John. I know. I'll never forget it. McCorkle. <laughs> My boy McCorkle, he's in he's in good shape. But that's about it, man. I I really don't think there's time to panic. I'm I'll, I'll, I'll shout out to Will Parkinson, you know, friend of the pod, uh, guest of the podcast. Uh, he held the spaces. Uh, I went in there reluctantly. I thought it was gonna be madness. 
everybody was pretty positive. I think everybody has the, you know, like the actual right head on their shoulders, right? We have the people that are like, yo, if you're a weirdo sending weirdo tweets about Mikai Becton being hurt, like this guy, Dan, Dan, whatever, I don't even know his stupid last name is, uh, he's a pro better or whatever tweeting. Oh yeah. What? Shout out to my under for when Becton got hurt. Like you're a moron. Yeah. Back then, they didn't even play last year. You're an absolute moron. Just shut up. Like, and you're low class as hell. But anyway, <laughs> so, like, that stuff, like, I was ready for that kind of mentality from the Jets. You know, from the Jets fans, like, oh, my God, the season's over. I had, I had, those are my text messages, right, coming through to me. Season's over, didn't even start yet, blah, 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 blah. So, I'm happy that's not the case. Uh, and, dude, it, the, the proof is in the pudding. Literally last year, we played without Mekhi Beckton. If you ask anyone, we had a terrible offensive line. If you ask evaluators, we didn't. Top half of the league. We added Lincoln Tomlinson. Yeah, I mean, to me, that... I don't know if I'm right or wrong with this. I think it's just because of the faith in Joe Douglas and Robert Sala. I think that's why the fan base isn't freaking panicking. Because if that was Adam Geese on your shirt, I think the place, the world would be on fire right now. Like All people gas, would be no freaking breaks, out. All gas, no break. And shout out, shout out to Barstool for making the shirt. Probably the best shirt they ever made. Um, but also shout out to Coach Sala for holding it down for Beckton. Yeah, great press conference. Bro, I listened to that whole thing. It was amazing. It was so good. He was going in, like, don't talk smack about our guy. He's a human being. This is football. Like, this guy has a respect to the locker room. He has a respect to the fan base. I just hope, Greg, uh, I'm nervous about Friday's preseason game versus the Eagles. Uh, I'm so excited. Are you excited? Are you not nervous at all about uh, Zach Wilson going with no tackles? Because it's no. two days. No, I don't know. Is Zach Wilson even playing? Do we, do we announce who's yeah. playing? He's playing two series. Yeah, so. No, I'm not worried about preseason games. I mean, worried about Jordan Davis. You see the, the – I mean, we all I know he that. was going to be good, but God damn, he's throwing people around left and right that weigh 340 pounds. I saw that. I'm nervous about that, but I'm not worried about Zach Wilson. I think he's going to be fine. I'm just ready to get some real football going, man. Football is back. We did a Pac-12 episode that will be out on Friday for college football. We're going to be doing some more on Winning Picks Weekly. We're going to be going over all the NFL stuff, divisions, conferences, our best bets. We're going to be betting every week, going through every single game. So I love that we're doing that again this year. We added Chip Murphy to that, Chip Murphy 7. He held it down for the Knicks episode this week on Knicks, Jets, etc. What a week for Alex to miss. We knew something was going to happen. We did. We were hoping it was going to be a Knicks trade and not a Jets season-ending injury. But here we I'm are. Knicks losing to amateurs in the Pro-Am oh, Don't even get me started. Don't even get me started about the Pro-Am game that shocked the world. <laughs> start. Nice pass though from Brunson to Obi behind the back for the dunk though. That was pretty sweet. Oh, and Obi Obi's got that Dirk on him right now. You see the little Dirk shot he's got working. Hey man, things can happen. Things can happen. The Mets are riding high. The the Yankees are playing good. I'm uh, okay right hope. now. Let's hope. Cole Cole's in the fourth inning with no runs, so no complaints. They'll get it going. Just like, <laughs> just like just like the Jets will. Just like the Jets will. Oh, your voice to God's ear, man. But that wraps it up for this week's Jets episode of the Things Jets Center podcast. Don't forget, like, subscribe to our YouTube. Next comment, Jets comment, ETC, period. Nobody spells it out. That's just wild. Hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Stitcher, Amazon. <laughs> you name it, we Anywhere are there. Anywhere podcasts are available, we are there. Google. Um, also, if you're on the Jet Press, we're there. Daily Knicks, we're there. We're everywhere, man. Say hello. Say what's up. Tell us how you feel about Mekhi back then in the Jets. Tell us who you want at right tackle. Tell us how you feel about the prospects of our offensive line going in. So next year, are we going to be worse than the top half? Are we going to be improve on last year? We didn't even talk about Mims. We'll talk about Mims after the preseason game. We'll see how he does. Yeah, we'll talk next week about him being a ridiculous guy. <laughs> He's fighting everyone. I love him. All right, that's about it. All gas, no brakes, baby. Let's go Jets. 